I want to talk about being enough because we are. Because I am. Because you are. And it's a great delusion to perceive anything as not enough. Especially, in particularly, the self. There's nothing wrong with feeling something is not enough. Just recognize that that is ego. It's not actually you. Yes, it's born from you. And so that which is born from you and is perceiving not enoughness is enough. And yes, it's perceiving inaccurately, but it is perceiving in a way that is true for it in that moment. And that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. If your child has a fever and is not perceiving the world accurately, that's okay. You have the awareness. You are in the place of broader awareness to recognize that what your child, who is feverish and delusional, is perceiving is very real for them. But it is not the truth of broader reality. And that's okay, and you're not concerned, and you're not trying to convince them. You are letting them have that delusion. You are letting them perceive you are, in fact, validating that their experience is acceptable and real for them. But you are not taking that truth on as yours. You are not letting the experience of one override your direct experience and your knowledge and your knowing and in various moments we are all in touch with that knowledge in different ways to different degrees different levels and that's okay that's okay it's perfectly designed so that we can descend from that place so that we can venture out onto the open ocean which sometimes is very dark and scary and feels very far from home but others are at the lighthouse others are on the shore others are standing on a rock on a sturdy foundation they're rooted in presence they're rooted in the knowledge of what is really deeply true ultimately true they're rooted in the knowledge of enoughness they're rooted in the knowledge, and knowledge is not intellectual, it's not conceptual, it is the direct experience. So when I say knowledge, I mean they are living it, they are experiencing, they have direct contact with and full awareness, they are perceiving by sensory awareness, internal senses, the absolute perfection of all, the completion of all, the enoughness of all, the goodness, the rightness, the wellness, the eternal, abundant, absolutely well-being of all. And so when some of us are out to sea and we are perceiving other than that, it's totally okay. There are others who are witnessing that, and this is what the rest of you is always doing for you. This is what the rest of yourself is always doing. This is why it feels just as gnarly as it does when we get our perspective so twisted. When we start really, really perceiving things as wrong and incorrect and not enough and bad, bad, bad. It feels as bad as it does because the rest of ourself isn't going there with us. The rest of ourself is letting us go there because that's that's true love. That's true love. Acceptance, unconditional, freedom, acknowledgement of our freedom, our freedom and our safety in descending to a perspective that is in total opposition to the perspective of the rest of ourself, which is perceiving clearly what is. Perceiving clearly because it has a higher vantage point, because it's not in the illusion this part of it. We're not going to get into that. Perceiving clearly and rooted in that knowledge and not budged, not influenced 
by our perception. So all of our screaming and our writhing, all of our dripping in disease and discomfort is not confusing the rest of us, not tricking, not convincing the rest of us into believing it, into taking it on as true. Because the rest of us is rooted in a deeper truth. And so is saying, I see that what you are experiencing is very real for you. And I applaud that and I validate that, but it is not true for me. My experience is very clear and very known directly. Again, not intellectually, it's not a belief. It's not a belief, it's a knowing. The rest of you is standing in the sun and saying, I feel sun, I feel sunlight, I feel the warmth of it upon my skin, I know it to be true. And so while you are in the shadows, in the cave, while you are experiencing night, whatever it is, you are safe to do so, and I validate and joyfully witness you in your experience. But your experience is not mine. And so I am not taking it on as my truth. I'm not calling it false, it's just... It's just a portion. It's like saying the southern hemisphere of the world is not experiencing <laughs> the opposite seasons. Just because in the northern hemisphere it's, it's summer right now. If we were to look at that and go, ah, no, you're... You're lying. I see summer, so it must be summer everywhere, and your experience is false. You are lying to me. That's not, that's not how it works. We can recognize that two truths, which seem very contradictory, would appear very contradictory to say that different parts of the world are experiencing different seasons, different, totally different times, different experiences of the world. That would sound like two truths that can't coexist, and yet they do. They absolutely do. It is absolutely a different season in a different part of the world. This is the same thing. This is no different. When one of us is in a season of discontent, and another is in a season of peace, those things coexist. But there is also this deeper, broader, it's, I wouldn't call it a season. There are, there are season cycles like that. But then there is a broader place of well-being. There's a broader place that knowing all of these seasons are a part of a bigger cycle. And that cycle is always good. It's always the right thing. It's always something good happening. It's always the best, the most appropriate. It is always well. It's always working out. And so when you're in that broader place of awareness, and this is the part that the rest of you is rooted in, positioned in, and which you can connect with, internally connecting with that perspective, when you're in that place, there is a deeper kind of peace. Because you are in the place beyond seasons. You are in the place that is beyond change. You are in the space from which all change is arising. Everything rising and falling, everything moving within that space, but that space doesn't change. That space is timeless. That space is beyond time. It is beyond the rise and fall of form. It is that from which all form rises and all form falls back into. And so when you are in that place, you are knowing again directly by experience the well-being of all, no matter what is taking place with the dance of form. No matter what season is being experienced in a shared way or in a personal, individual way. No matter what perspective is being experienced. And so when someone, including yourself, your, your experience of self, really ego, which is not a bad thing, 
So when an ego, whether it is your personal experience, a collective experience, another perceived other individual, when an ego is experiencing discontent, when it is experiencing what it believes is not enoughness, when, when that is its perception, the rest of you, and if you choose, all of you, <laughs> is holding the awareness that all is well, that everything is enough, that even this perception of not enoughness is enough. It's not a problem. saying something is not enough, not only am I really calling myself not enough, I am saying that the creator, the creator is not enough. I'm literally saying that divinity, spirit, self, source, whatever you want to call it, is not enough. That from which all comes forth, that which all is infinite, I am calling infinity not enough. It's literally everything. It's more than everything. It's so much everything that it's not able to be comprehended by the mind. And the mind is calling that not enough. <laughs> Even though it's only more. It is only ever more. But that is a part of the core delusion. And that's what the mind does. The mind is limited. And it perceives only limit. The mind is designed to perceive reality inaccurately. <laughs> that's what it does. And so, it's quite insane. And the things that it thinks and says and believes the majority of the time are totally insane. Insane meaning not in touch with reality, not in touch with truth. Now that experience still feels very real. And so it is a version of truth. It is true for you because you are creating that experience by your perception of it. But again, it's not all of you that's going there. And so when you are creating that experience of discomfort and lack and not enough, and whatever it is, it's really just the mind and the mind made itself, ego, that is going there and that is perceiving and having that experience. The rest of you is not living that experience. The rest of you is in alignment continuously with the ultimate truth that everything is enough, everything is good, everything is wonderful, is perfect, everything is good getting better. The rest of you is still having that experience. And really, that's why it feels so shitty. Because you are living in contradiction to yourself. The majority of you is having an experience of abundance. Your mind may itself is having an experience of lack. And that discrepancy is what causes so much pain. And when we allow another to lead us into that perspective where there is now a difference between what the human self, the mind may itself is perceiving and what the rest of ourself is perceiving, then we're feeling that pain also. So when someone calls you not enough and you allow your mind to believe it, your mind believes it, you feel that pain of not enoughness, not because that person called you not enough, but because your mind believed it and you followed your mind and now you are out of alignment with your own energy. You are perceiving in a way that is against the truth of what is and what the rest of you is perceiving. 
you are hurting not because of what someone said. You are hurting because your perception has gotten twisted. And that doesn't make that hurt any less real for you. That doesn't make that experience less real. It's just that's the reality of why it feels the way it does. Nothing is actually because of what happens. It's all because of our perception of what happens. It's all because of our perspective. If I get fired from my job, my brain may say, this is terrible. This is awful. This is a problem. This is a mistake. This is bad, 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 bad things. And because of that perception, I would experience a lot of discomfort, suffering. <laughs> but if I get fired from my job, and immediately go into perfect. This is wonderful, and it, it's this is not an easy thing to do. I'm not even saying it's necessarily possible all the time. It's not. But if I am able to, if I've practiced enough stepping into the place of knowing that all is well and all is working out for me, and so I get fired from my job, and I don't allow those thoughts of negativity to come in, I move immediately into perfect. It must be the right thing. This is the right thing. This is the best possible thing, and I am so grateful that, that it's happening because I'm excited for more. I'm excited for what comes next. I'm excited to see how good this can get, and I know that it is. It's just getting more good. It's just getting better, and then my experience of that is quite positive, actually, or at least neutral. I could at least aim for neutrality. It's not a bad thing. Maybe I can't jump into it's a good thing, and I don't need to. I can just trust it's not bad. I could just say it is what is. And then I am in the space of, of neutrality and I am still not experiencing that as a negative event because I am not bound up in this perspective that is against what the rest of me knows. Because again, that's really what it's all about. It's not about the event. It's about my perception of it. And it's not even that I'm perceiving it negatively, it's that I'm perceiving it in a way that is in opposition to what the rest of me is perceiving. That's why neutrality works. I don't have to hop on the bandwagon of it's all awesome, fuck yeah. I can just be in the space of, okay, this is fine. I'm not concerned, this is not a problem. That's perfect. <laughs> There, I'm not competing with the rest of my awareness. I'm allowing, I'm trusting. Everything is enough. Because really it is. All the time, all the time, whatever that looks like, it's enough. I am enough, you are enough. And that is exactly the right amount. I love you.